In this presentation, we will see what data sources are possible for the OPC system service. We will see how to programmatically and manually configure OPC items from Data Access 2.0 and 3.0 OPC servers. We will see how to use the opcsystems.net OPC server for third-party OPC clients. We'll also discover how to programmatically read and write data to the real-time database from Visual Studio standard applications, web applications, and mobile pocket PC applications, and how to read data from databases using the opcrecipe.net product and how to log data using opcdatabase.net. Let's take a look at the real-time database in the OPC system service. The best way to do that is using the configure application found under the program group opcsystems.net. Select the Configure OPC Systems application. We can then use Configure tags to look at a local service or remote services by putting in a network node name of, or an IP address or even a registered domain name. We're going to look at the local service by selecting Local Host. If you have the demo configuration loaded, you'll have example tags in front of you. We can go down to the RAMP tag and use it to take a look at some of the data sources that are possible. The default data source would be a fixed value. If we chose this type, whatever value is in the value field would then be the resultant value that you could then trend, data log, alarm. You can choose different data types for a particular tag. If it's a discrete tag, you would choose Boolean. For string types, you would use string. Integers, there are signed and unsigned integers. The default is a double float. If you don't know your data type, you can choose object type. And then you can use even custom data types with structures, arrays, all kinds of different possibilities are available with the object type. Let's choose the default double float. With a fixed value, you would use the OPC controls data component to write to a item. And this way, you can turn your Visual Studio application as a data source for the OPC system service. We will demonstrate the OPC controls data component later in this example. One of the most commonly used data source is an OPC item. This allows you to connect to an OPC server, whether it be locally or remotely. When you choose OPC item as a data source, there's a browse button to the right. When you select this button, another dialog appears, which you can use to then browse your OPC servers. Even if your service is connected over a remote system, you can choose local and you would be browsing OPC servers on that remote system using TCP con connection and you would eliminate the DCOM connection. We would then select the OPC server. We're going to use the EEI.OPC simulator and let's go down into sim device and we could take a look at some of the items that are under that group. If we select the ramp item, we'll see the full qualified OPC item is returned for you. You can optionally return additional properties from an OPC item. If we choose this option, then when we select the OPC item, the data type and other properties that are available for that item are returned for us. When we click OK, we can see that OPC item is returned for us. We can then apply the changes. And then if we have good connection, we should see the value appear in the value, black value field up above. When the data source is set to an OPC item, you can set the optional property to set the data source value to a fixed value or hold it to the last known good value when the OPC item provides bad data quality. The default is normal bad quality which means if the OPC item does go into failure all client connections will then present the proper reading as a bad quality. Another data type that's uh, another data source that's very popular is a calculation. When we choose calculation, an edit button appears to the right.
We can then do simple math equations. Let's take the example of adding two tags together. We would say insert tag. We're going to select the local service, but you could select a remote service as well for remote tag selections. Let's select the data source ramp to and then select the value. We'll select OK. Then we'll use the insert function button to insert different uh, functions that we might want to do. In this example, we're going to choose the add function, which is just simply a plus. Then let's insert another tag from the local service. Let, this time let's select random to value. Click OK. And now as long as our equation is value, it will return, uh, it will do a syntax check and it will validate that uh, equation for us. We can then select apply changes and now we see the value is the result of those two tags added together. So that's how to do real-time calculations. There are other types of uh, functions. One of the more popular ones to use is the if statement. And using the if statement, we can then put a conditional statement in the first argument. Let's take the example that random2 and we're going to compare that tag. If it is say above 0.5 then we'll set the result value to 1 otherwise the result value will be 0. We'll move that conditional expression into the proper argument as the first argument itself. When we click OK it validates the equation syntax is correct when we then click apply changes we see that the value toggles between 0 and 1 based upon whether random 2 is greater than 0 0.5 or not. In a calculation you can have as many different local and remote tags used and you can manually type them in as well or with all of the tag configurations we always have a CSV import and export feature that's very useful to set up in Excel. Other data source types can be the system time clock. We can return, say, the year from the CPU clock, or maybe the current number of seconds that would range from 0 to 59, or choose seconds today. This is the total number of seconds that have elapsed in the current day. Let's see how we would configure a remote real-time database. In the network node field at the top, you can put in an IP address, network node name, or a registered domain name like we're going to use here. We're going to use opcsystemserver.com. When we hit the select button, we are now connected to a system registered in Texas, and as long as you have an internet connection, you'll then be able to see those tags and all the properties for a particular tag. Let's select the ramp2 tag. Then if we used OPC server browsing, we would still want to use the local connection for the OPC server browsing because we want that server to browse OPC servers local to it, even though we are configuring a system across the internet. When we then take a look at the OPC items on a particular server, you can see that the item path returned is a local OPC item. However, the service is running remotely on a remote system. Let's go back to our local service and let's configure some tags there. Let's add some new tags to the configuration. If we select add tag from the menu bar and let's type in remote space calc for a remote calculation. We'll then select that tag from the list and as a data source we're going to set it to a calculation. What we're going to do here is we're going to create a calculation that is from a couple tags on that remote system across the internet. If we select the edit button to the right, then when we select insert tag, this time in the network node field we're going to put in that registered domain name or it could be your own remote IP address if you'd like. When we hit the select button, we are now browsing items on that remote service. So let's select the ramp to button. You can see the tag returned 
is double backslash www.opcsystemserver.com backslash ramp2.value. We click OK. And now let's insert an addition, insert another tag, and again, browse that remote service. We'll select random2 value. OK. So we're adding ramp2 and random2 from that remote service. Now when we click apply changes, we are getting the value from that remote system across the internet. Because we have built-in queuing, you can see that we're not dropping any values. Even if the internet connection was slow, we would deliver all values received from that remote service. Another way to do remote connection is from your own third-party OPC client. Let's say if you had a Wonderware or Intelution or RS View application or even WinCC from Siemens. These are all OPC clients. From your third-party application, you can now browse our OPC systems.net OPC server that you would install locally to that system. Here we're going to use the OPC systems.net local configuration and connect to a local OPC server, which is OPC systems.net. We're going to select a local group of tags, and again we're going to select ramp2. Click OK. When we apply changes, we are now going to get those values. If you would like your third-party OPC client to access a remote OPC system service, simply replace the local connection under the OPC item path and replace that with network, followed by the network node name, IP address, or registered dom domain name that you want to connect to. Then when you select Apply Changes, you will then be connected to that remote OPC system service tag. We can change the OPC update rate, and we can say even across the internet, the OPC client that's running locally here is connected through the OPC systems.net OPC server, and then using TCP connections with queuing to connect over the internet to that remote OPC system service. Next, let's explore how would you use your own Visual Studio application as a data source. To do this, we're going to add a group under the tag configuration, and let's call this group name BB App. Scroll down to select that VB App group and right click on it to add three new tags. Will you add tag one, tag two, and tag three? You should now have three tags within that group. You can also organize additional groups inside of other groups. It is up to you as how you structure your tags. Tags can also be programmatically added or modified during runtime even. And that's demonstrated under the vb.net example that you have installed. If you look at opcsystems.net, you have the example code and the example application. If we take a look at configure CSV import and export, there you have a tag uh, CSV export and a CSV import methods that you can call. If we look at the local tag configuration here, we can then select the tag CSV import method. It has said it's added three new tags, so if we hit the select button to refresh our local configuration, we see that a new group is created called CSV import group, and there are three new tags there. Under the VB app group, we have tag one, it has a default data type of double float and a default data source as value. If you wanted the values that you're writing from your Visual Studio application to go on down to OPC servers, simply set the data source as OPC item as we have done earlier. When you define them as a data source to that OPC server, then when it, the tag receives writes, it will automatically write those values on down to the OPC server. 
For now, we're going to leave the default as value. Now we're ready to modify your Visual Studio application and add the OPC Controls data component so that you can call the write tags method. This is also demonstrated under the form form write values in the vb.net example. Here under Visual Studio, I'm going to create a new project. And the project type that I'm going to choose is Visual Basic, but you can also use C Sharp and C++ as well. We're going to develop a standard Windows application. When we click OK, it's going to bring up a form, a default form. And the next thing we're going to do is go to the toolbox. If you have not added the OPC controls components to the toolbox yet, how to do that is first I would recommend to add a tab and call this OPC controls or OPC systems. And then right click under that tab group and select choose items. If this is the first time you're choosing this under Visual Studio, it may take a while for it to find all of the .NET components. When the form appears, you can then go down to OPC controls. They're alphabetically ordered. The first selection is probably the OPC alarm control that you may want to use in some of your other applications. If we select that, and then scroll down to the very last com OPC component, which is the OPC Web Trend product. Hold down the Shift key, click OK, and then hit the space bar to select all of those components. Here we're selecting Web Controls, Trend Components, OPC Mobile Components, the OPC Systems Component, and most interesting uh, for right now is the OPC Controls Data Component. When we click OK, all standard WinForm components will be visible. Web-based and mobile-based components will not be viewed right now in the toolbox because the application that we have open right now is not applicable for web or mobile development. The first thing we're going to do is add a couple labels to just simply display those values from those three tags that we had added earlier. So if we drop an OPC controls label onto the form, the next thing we'll do is we'll select that control and right click to select properties. The properties dialog can also be viewed by pressing the F4 key. What we're going to do is overwrite the text property with the value from an OPC systems.net tag. So select the property text OPC systems underscore tag. Choose the browse icon to the right. And here we're going to browse a local OPC system service. You could also connect to a remote system. If you want your application to run on multiple remote computers, I would suggest that you t define that to the data source service with an IP address, network node name, or registered domain name so that when your application is deployed remotely, it will connect to that remote service. We also have an easy to use node alias so if you connect all of your application to a local system for not right now your OPC controls application with one method can be overloaded to redirect all local connections to a remote node. When we scroll down we'll see that new group that you've just created and we can now browse for tag one value. When we click OK that returns that tag name in the text OPC systems underscore tag field. Now let's copy and paste that control two times. And let's just change tag one for tag two in the second control and tag one for tag three in the third control. We're now ready to drop the OPC controls data component onto the form. And let's add a standard button to the form. Under this button, let's change the text of that to write values. We're going to use this button click event under this button to write values to the OPC system service. We can change the name of the button to write values if you'd like as well. 
Now simply double click on the Write Values button. And this brings up the code editing so that we can now begin editing what type of uh, tags that we want to write to. First, let's create an array of tags that we want to write. Let's put in some values. And the, ob the values that we're going to write is going to be an object array. For now, we'll just manually enter those tag names that we want to write to. So the first element in that array is, I'll grab this actually from the configure uh, OPC systems application. equals and again we'll copy and paste so these are the three tags that we're going to write to what are the values that we're going to write well for now let's just fill something in that we know And we simply need to write one method to write all of the values to those three tags. And that is from the OPC controls data component. If you haven't changed the name of your data component, it should be OPC controls data one. And then we're going to call the method write tags. The first argument in this method is the tags that we want to write to. The second argument are the values that we want to write to. Now here in this example it's very simple that we're just writing the values 1, 2, and 3 to tags 1, 2, and 3. But you can see you can write any value that you'd like. It doesn't ha even have to be numeric. It can be your own custom structure that you use to transfer across the internet. Now we're ready to run and debug this application. You can see the values as they first come up have the value 0 and then when you click on the write values button they are then assigned to the values 1, 2, 3. So you can see how easy it is using the OPC controls data component to write to the OPC systems real-time database. This is a way you can turn your Visual Studio application into a data source for opcsystems.net and then use all 12 product features and treat that data as if it was real-time data, the same as if it was coming from an OPC server. If you wanted to maintain 100 nanosecond resolution, I recommend to include a third argument in the write tags method. And that would allow you to include timestamps to uh, allocate the actual time for the data source for each individual value that you're writing from your Visual Studio application. In this way, you could say be writing to just one tag, but then be passing 10,000 values for that individual tag. We'll then index those for your individual timestamps and use opcdatabase.net and log all of those values all at once. So you can write multiple tags, multiple values all together in one method. If you wanted to read values into your Visual Studio application, you also use the OPC Controls data component. You simply call a method called add tags on the data component and you pass an array of tag names that you wish to monitor and then also use an event called values changed all which will return tag names, values, timestamps and qualities that you can then use in your application. This is demonstrated in the VB.NET example. Under the program group OPCSystems.net you have the source code of the example and we're going to run the compiled example and under the menu data read values we'll see how that we can monitor any tags that we would like from the local service and you can see that we're receiving all value changes from that tag that we've subscribed to but also under the network node pull down we'll subscribe out to the registered domain name www.opcsystemserver.com when we select this, we'll now monitoring from the remote system on the internet and a system in Texas, and we see that we're also receiving all values using the data component.
This is because the OPC system service is running locally there on that system in Texas and is providing queuing to provide all data. This is how we can maintain 100 nanosecond resolution even communicating across the internet. Now I'd like to show you how to connect directly to an OPC server without creating an OPC systems.net tag. To do that, we can do that from any client application like trending, data logging, recipe management, even in the calculations that we demonstrated earlier under configure tags. But here we're going to use the Visual Studio application again. So let's select View Solution Explorer and bring up that form uh, that we were working with earlier. we double click on the form it appears we can now close the solution explorer and let's dra drag another OPC controls label onto the form this time we're going to go to properties go down to the text OPC systems tag property and when we select local we see to the right at the very top a direct OPC selection. If we expand that, we can then connect to OPC servers. We can browse local and remote OPC servers. Let's go down to the SIM device and select Ramp 2 under the SIM device. Let's set the OPC update rate to 0 0.1. We'll see the queuing effect occur. When we click OK, you can see the full path is returned, and that reference designates that we're going to connect directly to an OPC server through the OPC system service so that we're using TCP connections from the Visual Studio application to the service, but the OPC system service is connecting to the OPC server locally using the standard OPC DCOM connection. If we now run and debug this application, we can see that the service will automatically add that item for us and start bringing the value back for us. So the direct OPC interface can be used in all client applications including OPC client.net with your third-party OPC client. This is a great tunneling product so that you can have systems all over the world using third-party OPC clients, Visual Studio applications, or the great OPC systems.net components like trending and the OPC controls components here, and all communicating back to your OPC servers. Now let's take a look at how we would bring values in from a database. We do that with the product feature opcrecipe.net. First let's configure the data source. We're going to use Microsoft SQL Server and I'm going to use the SQL Server Management Studio. Here I'm using the free to use version that you can download from Microsoft.com called the SQL Server Express. The server name is going to be important for us later in order to connect to that database. For now we'll go ahead and connect into SQL Server. Under the databases object, we'll right click to create a new database. The database name we're going to use is called Recipes. We select OK and we'll now add a table to that recipe. If we right click on or double click on the databases and go to tables, right click on tables and select new table. Let's put in the column name value 1 and we'll set the data type to a float. We'll put value 2 also as a float and value 3 as a float type. We'll also add an additional column called lot number. We're going to use this to query what type of data, what record set is returned in order to 
write the values to the OPC system service. This is going to be a character field. We'll use the default of 10 characters. We'll save that with the default of table underscore one. We're now ready to put in a few values into that table. So we can close the design view, double click on the tables, right click on table one, and now let's open that table. In value one, we're going to put in the value one, two, and three for values one, two, and three. For the lot number, we're going to use the letter A. For the second record set, we'll put in 101, 102, and 103 for the values, and the lot number as B. We now have our data source configured, so now we're ready to use the configure recipe selection using the configure OPC systems application. So if we go to configure recipes and we are going to select the local service to configure we'll put in a recipe name of test we'll make the recipe active with the type of recipe that we're going to do we're going to use a single record type returned the multiple record type allows you to put the tag names and the values in the database itself and that is where the mapping is done is what values are written to what particular tags here we're going to do the mapping in OPC systems and select a single record type the execution type that we're going to do is going to be continuous with event driven type you can have this come from a PLC and this is great for bringing down formulas uh, with full error confirmation and feedback available as we're seeing right here with the continuous type, we'll set an execution rate of one second. The timeout we can leave at 60 seconds as the default. But we're going to check the option to write all values without feedback. This is the best way to write continuous values quickly without having to confirm that the values were sent all the way to the opcsystems.net tags. Um, using feedback is great if you're bringing values down to a PLC for different formulas. Under the tags tab we're going to map what tag names we're going to write to to the field names from the database. So we'll select the local service to write to. We'll go down and select that VB app group and choose tag1 value. Select OK and then the field name that we're going to read from is value one. That's the same field name we just put in SQL Server. We select OK. We'll go ahead and add the other two tags that we want to write to. If you wanted to set up a lot of tags in fields quickly, you can right click in the tag list and do a CSV import and export. Now we're ready to move over to the database tab. And as the provider, we're going to select SQL Server. For the server name, we need to obtain that from the SQL Server engine. That's very easy to use the SQL Server Management Studio. I'll disconnect from the server and now connect back and in the first dialog that comes up there's the server name that we want to read from so we'll copy that and paste that into our server name field the database that we called it was recipes and the table was table underscore one we're going to use Windows authentication, but you can also use SQL Server authentication if you want to connect to the database. 
The query string property is an optional property that you can use to determine what record you want to return from the table. We're going to demonstrate this with a few tags that automatically set the query string. Select configure tags, connect to the local service, and let's use the add tag selection to add a tag name called lot number. Next we'll add a second tag called query string. The first tag lot number we're going to change its data type to a string and we'll set the value to a capital A. In the query string tag it is also going to be set up as a data type of string but the data source we're going to set as a calculation. Let's put in this calculation. And this is going to be a query string that will be returned. It'll say where lot number equals and then we're going to concatenate the, the actual value of the lot number tag together. When we apply those changes, you should then see the resultant value. It says where lot number equals A. We're now ready to go back to the recipe configuration. And under the query string property, we'll set the query string with tag and browse for the tag query string on the local service. We are now ready to add that recipe configuration to the OPC system service by selecting the add recipe configuration. It is now running continuously. Now let's go back to our Visual Studio application and go back to the form view and add one more control to that form for entering what lot number we wish to return the data from. Let's go down and select an OPC controls text box. Drag that onto the form. Go to the properties dialog and set the text OPC systems tag property. We'll browse for a local tag. And that tag is going to be lot number dot value. We'll click OK. and we're now ready to run that application. Here we see the values that are currently being updated to the opcsystems.net tag from the OPC recipe feature. If we enter in a lot number of B, hit the enter key, we will see the values now being returned from the database. The record that contains the values 101, 102, and 103. If we go back to lot A, we'll see that the values change back to that. If we want to log values to a database, that's quite simple. If we go to configure data logging, select the local service, let's enter a logging group name of test, We'll activate the logging. We'll set the continuous logging at a default rate of one second. You can log continuously down as fast as 10 microseconds if you'd like, or with event-driven logging you can log as fast as 100 nanoseconds. Under the Tags tab, we'll determine what values we want to log. If we select the Add Field button, we can then Browse the local service. Let's log the values ramp value and the field name. We can leave that at the default of ramp underscore value and the data type as double float. Let's also log from the local service random value 
and sign value. In the database tab, we'll enable to log to a database. We'll select SQL Server as the engine. And in the server name field, we'll enter in the server name of the SQL Server engine. In the database, we'll type in something new called test OPC and the table name as test. We'll use Windows authentication. When we select add, we are now logging values to the database. If the database didn't exist, it will automatically be created. So now let's go back to our SQL Server engine. We'll refresh our databases and we'll see we have a new database called Test OPC. If we go into the Tables object, right click and select Script Table As Select To New Query Editor. This is a way to query what values are in the database and we'll execute that query we'll see we now have values being logged into that database. All of these configuration parameters can be programmatically set up as well as demonstrated in the VB.NET example. If we go to the program group opcsystems.net and then launch the example application we can take a look at configure recipes we can return what recipe names are currently running in the recipe engine and we can return what parameters. We can also use configure CSV import and export. If you scroll down you can return the recipe configuration parameters as an array of objects. This is quite useful to set up multiple recipes using the CSV import feature. The same is true for the data logging configurations and the tag configurations that we just discussed earlier. So we can see how easy it is to bring in data from different data sources into the opcsystems.net real-time database. We've looked at how to bring in data from OPC servers, OPC clients, Visual Studio applications and with this we can see the data sources are really endless because Microsoft Visual Studio is very compatible with lots of different data sources like XML files, Word, Excel, databases and your own custom data as well. And we've seen how to bring data in using opcrecipe.net and turn around and log that back with the feature opcdatabase.net. I would encourage you to visit the website opcsystems.com to download the product for a 30-day evaluation and go to the sales page to see where you can purchase the software and if you have any technical questions you can contact us here directly at support at opcsystems.com or contact any of one of our sales distributors all over the world under the sales page.